to the, today's MHA video. Um, we're going to talk about the leisure and tourism sector. My name's Colin Johnson. I'm a partner at MHA and I'm pleased to be joined today by Sue Rathmull. Hi Colin, yes my name's Sue Rathmull and I'm a VAT partner at MHA in, in Kent. Okay, so um, um, some of the uh, announcements yesterday related to VAT, Sue. Um, perhaps that's a good place to start. Yeah, sure. There was a lot about VAT, wasn't there? Um, well, there was an awful lot uh, of, of his <laughs> of what he said, but there was a lot about VAT. So yes, Colin, what we know is that the, the VAT rate, which has been reduced to 5% on tourism and, and leisure services uh, since July last year, that is going to be extended to the end of September 2021. Uh, which is great because it will cover the summer season uh, for the UK tourism industry. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's uh, going to go up, but not fully to the 20% rate. It's going to go up to 12.5% until the 31st of March 22, when we're expecting it to go back to the 20%. So I think um, tourism and hospitality businesses generally have welcomed this. They did ask for it prior to the budget. They were calling out for it to at least cover the summer, and it has done. So the sorts of services that will be affected are pubs, but not alcohol, restaurants, again, not alcohol, cafes, coffee shops, takeaways, unless it's cold takeaway, which is zero rated, um, hotels, bed and breakfasts, uh, caravans, any other sort of holiday accommodation. And then you've got things like cinemas, theatres, theme parks, um, and other kinds of attractions like castles and so on. So it's very wide ranging. And it also feeds into, um, for tour operators, although HMRC haven't properly confirmed it, that the 5% rate can be used um, for the margin on UK holidays uh, for tour operators as well. So yes, quite wide ranging, Colin. Yeah, and I think it will be uh, really well received in the main by most most operators, um, you know, last summer when it was introduced, it was really helpful, allowed people to enhance their margins to a certain extent to make up for some of the damage of being closed. So, yeah, I think um, most operators will be really pleased to see that, albeit, albeit they'll, they'll always be the odd, uh, the, the odd operator who wants it to last a little bit longer or be a little bit um, bigger or, or whatever, but that, that's just life, isn't it? That is life, I suppose. <clears throat> Um, I mean, we're out of the EU now, but when we were within the EU, we had one of the highest rates applicable to tourism and leisure services because so many of the other countries within the EU have a reduced rate. So I think a lot of operators were hoping that, you know, we would have something that would continue kind of forever. And uh, who knows, maybe, you know, maybe this will continue longer. Um, but I, I think it, I think it is great. Some of my clients have been saying, you know, that it gives them a chance to, to, uh, really plan for a good season we've they've seen some good bookings so far uh, you know self-catering holidays can start from the 12th of April I think um, I was looking for something myself and it was extremely busy uh, on Airbnb so it's good it look, looks like people are going to stay in the UK mm. um, and of course for hotels and so on I think it's May isn't it that people can start going back into hotels yeah so the I mean alongside the VAT um, reduction. Um, we've also seen uh, an extension of the uh, business rates holiday. Um, so again, that will be helpful. There's a there's a hundred percent um, reduction up until the end of June, um, and a further and, and a sixty six percent reduction up until the end of March. So so again, I think that will be that will be really welcome uh, mm. in terms of keeping keeping keep people's cash flow intact. Um, the furlough scheme has been extended as well. Um, that'll go on yep. to September, although you know, the latter months, I think it will be required to be contributed to by the employer. Um, and then there's, the, there's also the introduction of the uh, business restart grants, yes. which, are, um, which again, vary in size according to what sector you're in and also when you can receive them. But again, will actually be really, um, really, really be welcomed. Fine. Cash in hand, yeah. And for hospitality and leisure businesses, I think it's up to eighteen thousand pounds, isn't it? So it's quite absolutely. a large amount. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so um I think there were some other more general measures as also announced yesterday, which um which will be helpful. Um perhaps at the at the lower end of the of the market, the um 
the leisure and tourism, sorry, the uh, stamp duty um, mm -hmm. holiday that's been extended will be helpful in um, helps, helping stimulate the odd transaction perhaps where the sale of a house is the starting point, point to, a, to a transaction. Um, and in addition to that, loss, loss relief enhancements I think will also be very helpful for certain operators, allowing them to carry back some losses to earlier periods. Um, mm. Yeah, that perhaps might create some cash. You know, and creating, yeah. creating cash might allow them the opportunity to invest, invest, which is where the um, the in the enhanced uh, uh, capital allowances might come in, um, and the new super deduction, um, mm -hmm. which gives an extra thirty percent um, tax relief on top of the of the qualifying qualifying expenditure. So, yeah, I, I think yeah. in positive. A good package, I think. Shame about the inc increase in the corporation tax, but it's not for a couple of years. And also a lot of businesses in this industry would be delighted to make a profit, really, wouldn't they? Even if it meant they had to pay more corporation tax. So, um, so yes, it gives them a chance, I think, to get back on their feet, um, assuming that, you know, we're going to open up as we expect to. Um, I think it's, a, it's overall, it's good news. Can I just also say, don't forget, if you're uh, listening, don't forget that um, the scheme for HMRC uh, to allow you to defer payment of the VAT that you deferred last year, you're allowed to repay it over the coming 11 months, that is now open. So you can go in, you can sign up for that. So that gives you, again, you know, a cash flow benefit, no interest to be paid and share it out over 11 uh, monthly payments. So so there's some good news there. You have to actually apply for that, do you, So It's not something you do. automatically, okay? No, you do. You have to apply for it, um, and, and your advisors can't do it for you, actually. You have to do it yourselves um, through the Government Gateway, um, and you have to pay the first payment when you make that application. So, um, And the later you leave it, um, obviously you get the cash flow benefit of leaving it later, but you get fewer payments to pay it over because it all has to be paid by Mar end of March next year. Great. Okay. So, so yeah, I, I know overall, I thought it was a really helpful budget for the, uh, mm. for the sector. Um, the signs are, I would suspect, is it's going to be a very, sum, very busy summer season, you know, with the restrictions that are in place um, in relation to overseas travel. So certainly for um, clients who are operating in the holiday sector, as you might describe, yeah. I think it would be, it would be very positive, perhaps, People who rely slightly more on overseas visitors might find things slightly, slightly more challenging. I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. And let's hope there's good weather as well this summer because that will make all of the difference. Yeah. Great. Thank you for listening, everybody. If you want more information, you can find it on the MHA website. That's mha-uk.co.uk. All the very best. Bye bye. bye.